Well, Aristo, hello. Hello, Ron. It is six o'clock exactly where you are, and uh, one o one where I am. There's a little bit of a difference in the clock, but. Um, yeah, this one's actually a little bit slower than my computer. The other day I was thinking I was starting at 4.44, and when I w went back and watched the video, I actually started at 4.43, because I, I forgot to account for the difference of the clock behind me. Well, that's okay. I'm the one talking mostly here, so my time is more important. So it's 1.01, <laughs> and that's, <laughs> and that's a, a very uh, significant time. Wholeness between polarities, that's what 101 is, uh, because you got the zero separate. So let's see if we can, now I have no clue what I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to try to talk loudly because there's, there's a little bit of stuff in the background, uh, and as slowly as I can, um, and we'll see what topic develops from this. Uh, I've noticed that there was a big religious discussion uh, the past few days. Um, and I've been, I've also read Paige Bartholomew's article about uh, what to do when you confront terrorists and stuff, you know, all the bad news and how to deal with it on the inside. And I've also had some incidents on the outside in my personal life. And uh, there's, it, this all synchronizes, it kind of gels together. So it will be the topic of my conversation. So let me begin with the personal stuff. Uh, I haven't had much sleep, and thank goodness my voice is, is not as bad as it was, because my, my neighbors were doing yard work, and uh, they were hacking down trees and throwing them over the fence to my yard. Uh, and we're talking big trees. Uh, so, you know, and I just went ballistic because they woke me up at the crack of dawn. After telling me not to do yard work in the morning because it bothers them, they get up at the crack of dawn and start the chainsaws and the weed whackers and, you know, an army of you know, people and uh, throw the, all the, and they throw trash bags over the fence too and say, you take them out, ha, 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 sucker. You know, the neighbors from hell. And uh, they've been doing this for years and my parents haven't been, when they were, you know, when my father was alive, my parents didn't react. Oh, that's no big deal. You know, I'm like, they're just going to make it worse because they think they can get away with anything. You can't just sit back and let them do it. I mean, they're of the mindset that if you don't go and make a fuss, you're a sucker and you should be trampled. You know, this is the world we live in. Okay, this is how people are conditioned. So passive loving is uh, similar to the animal kingdom where you show fear to the predator. It is not similar to the animal kingdom where you show your belly and the aggressor just says, okay, let's... You know, the fight is over. This is predation in humanity. It's not, psychopathy is predation. It's not conflict in the sense of the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom, when you have the same species entering into conflict with another member of the same species, either to, for territory or reproductive purposes or whatever, there are set instinctive boundaries in order for uh, the species not to wipe itself out so it doesn't be, go to war. Humanity doesn't have those boundaries, and thus another instinct comes in. Because if one set of boundaries doesn't work, nature is going to impose the next set of boundaries. And the human brain, those set of sets of boundaries are regarding separate species. We treat our own species like it's another species. The only other species that does this is ants. And they're two different species of ants. They're not the same one. They can't reproduce, so that doesn't even apply. Red ants and black ants go to war. You know, what, what the red ants come out, they raid the, the thing of the black ants, they take their eggs, they turn them into slaves. It, it, it's remarkably very similar to human society. But they're still two different species with two different chemical signatures. Ants excrete chemical signatures, they go on to smell and, and all of this. In any case, so they throw the crap over. They've been doing this. And all I do, all I can do is, you know, uh, scream. Uh, so I go in the yard and start yelling, I'm going to call the cops, those bastards, really, really, basically get the energy out. Because I'm not going to go confront them, because that's what they want. I don't want to go into conflict mode. I want to go into free expression mode. So if you see conflict, and it flips you out, you need to be able to acknowledge how you're feeling. You cannot 
sacrifice how you're feeling in the name of love even, because that's not loving. That's not love. That's moral imprisonment. That's what religious tell us to, religions tell us to do. They give us moral dictates in order to imprison our natural responses so we can be controlled. I don't care what anybody says. That's the difference between religion and spirituality. Spirituality liberates religion in prisons. That is the purpose. You, whenever you get a bunch of... <laughs> that is, whenever you get a bunch of people and tell them what God is and how they have to obey God, you're, you're basically telling them how they're going to obey you. And in the end, when the you know guy who comes up with this stuff writes a book about it, and then gives you the book and dies, you know, even after they die, you're still their slave via the book, via the dictates. Even if the book and everybody sugarcoats uh, tyranny, most tyrannies do not survive unless they have something truthful in them. Even communism has some kind of true premise on equality and, and all of this. Everything, even fascism, uh, what's his name, uh, Mussolini, all these people say, oh, he, you know, the bankers gave him a lot of money, same as Hitler. He built up the infrastructure of the country, he gave people jobs, uh, he, he fed them, he fixed the economy, so, you know, one person, the enlightened dictator, does all these great things, and then poof, the boot falls. That's the problem. Uh, human tyranny is, whenever it's effective, is always sugar-coated in the beginning, so people watch out for that. That's just the sideline. Anyways, I got really, really pissed. It was the last draw. No sleep. I'm out here ready to take the chainsaw myself and start on a rampage. I mean, I was really seeing myself, okay, first I'm going to cut the trees and I'm, I'm going to cut them down. Um, but instead, I was just, you know, what was important was to get the emotion through. That the important thing wasn't that these people were throwing trees in my yard so much as that they were mark or the whole marking the territory thing they were basically imposing that my life was being crushed they were imposing their own will upon me so my expression in general was feeling crushed so i needed to re ramp up my own expression i needed to to tell myself that i was still sovereign no matter what in a way that was convincing to me so i could act like a human being so I can get my bearings, stand up, think, and express. And, and I sat up and I basically started uh, expressing how I felt. You bastards, you know, now I got this stupid tree in my yard. I'm going to call the cops. I'm going to get a lawyer. I know you guys have, uh, you know, built, uh, not paid your taxes and <laughs> all kind of things like that. So you better watch out. And then I left. And uh, I stayed out till late, came back late, because, you know, this thing was, was really boiling and boiling. Um, but in the end, they heard me and just stopped. Um, and it was just the tone and the energy of the voice. Righteous anger. And I don't mean righteous in the sense that I'm right and you're wrong. I mean anger that is the result of oppression. Oppression of your being because somebody is stepping over the line is not a bad thing. It is the energy that is going to get us free if we learn to channel it. And we don't learn it in some classroom. We learn it through experience. That's so, what the workshops are all about, by the way. That's a major part of the workshops. Exactly. And, and all of these things. But the thing, what I did was just get in the car, the only place I could actually vent, and scream my head off for 10 minutes. Uh, and, and then notice how my body was feeling. I was screaming my head off. Most people scream and they can pop a vein in the head or <laughs> start choking. But the thing is, when you're tuned with your body, you, you can modulate your voice, you move because you feel inside where the tension is. Because something doesn't allow the energy, the feeling to move. It keeps it blocked. And sometimes you go through and you feel it go up and there's a knot in your stomach and it, it goes up in your chest and you start gagging. Or, or you might even vomit, I don't know, but, but you start going through all these convulsive things because the body wants to release that tension that's already inside, that becomes the anger trigger. That tension, you might, spirit, people in alternative spirituality say that this is on the inside, whatever's on the outside is on the inside. 
If I was flowing smoothly, I generate an atmosphere wherever I go and influence everything around me to flow smoothly. Now this was triggered coincidentally at a time when the planetary alignments are very, very chaotic right now. We have earthquakes, we have massacres, we have all kinds of crazy things. Everybody's coming up, oh, nothing is working, let's all just, you know, leave three dimensions, I'm fed up. Acting like little brats. Go kill yourself, I don't care. But every time I hear that, it pisses me off. I don't care. I mean, you're not in Syria getting your nuts cut off or your children massacred. It's a crying shame to hear somebody say, I'm fed up like a little brat who isn't getting his candy. I don't care how shitty life is. As long as you're alive and you can eat and you can stand, you know, you do not give up. And if you want to give up, do so quietly so as not to dishearten anybody else. I'm sorry. But you're not being massacred yourself. You're not there. That's despair. Being strung up in the dungeon and being skinned alive. Being raped out the ass, that's being, yeah, that's despair. All of those people in ISIS, when they were little kids, they were raped continuously. All of those soldiers that are going out and killing people and recruited by the CIA and whatever and being given who knows what psychotropists, because they're not Muslims, they're rape victims. And the old men were rape victims before. Now, who cares, you'll say. I don't care. They're killing people. They have to stop. Yes, they have to stop, but they're not going to stop when we fall into easy despair, the despair of a spoiled child. It's like, yes, I understand. Yes, I understand. But there has to be a point where you tell the little child, shut up, man up, and, and really sit down and think about these things. Now, this is my anger talking, okay? I may not seem very loving right now. And you do the same thing. You know, you get up there, you become frustrated. But I'm frustrated with the frustrated people. It's like if you're frustrated, then your priority is to learn to express that frustration in some way in your own privacy so when you can come back and be a part of a community and link up, you are not resonating frustration to other people because they're going to resonate frustration to you and you're going to be one big frustrated mess unless you are like the seminars or the love line and you actually have a means and a, and a way to use the frustration in order to move and heal. If it's just raw frustration without any conscious deliberation that has an intention to heal, then it's not loving, it's selfish. So, you know, because I feel frustration too, I come here in all of this, but I'm venting it in this way in order to show something, in order to show that the power of rage is not destructive, it can be inspiring. So it's not like, you come up here and you're bitching at us. No, I'm not bitching at anybody. I can bitch at myself in the same way. But the next day, the neighbors had to do their weed whacking again, but they didn't throw anything over the fence. At least it put them at bay, because they know that I'm awake on the other side of the fence, and that this time I gave them a chance to think about it. But next time, they don't know what I'm fucking gonna do. And that's what we need, the message we need to send to everybody else out there. Everybody in authority. We're on the other side of the fence, we're aware of you, and you don't know what we're fucking gonna do because you're always trying to figure it out. That's what people don't emphasize enough. They're always trying to figure us out, always. That's their big thing. They're not trying to kill us, they're trying to soft kill us, they're trying to weaken us because they're afraid of what we're going to do. Nobody is afraid of a dead dog. Nobody is afraid of a corpse. People are afraid of something that can actually make a difference. They're afraid of something that can actually... So if, if the so-called enemies are afraid of us, why are we so fucked up that we give... I give up. Where's my candy? Where's my money? I give up. I'll kill myself. This world, I'm so fed up with it. it you know, come on, man. Do you know how you sound when you say that? I'm not speaking to you personally. I'm speaking to every time I hear that crap. I'm sorry, people, if you get offended. But the problem is that we're offended by all the wrong people for all the wrong reasons. We're not offended by the people that are really fucking us. We sit there and we justify them all the time. We sit there and we try to be loving to the psychopaths when the people around us are freaking out. And instead of encouraging them and giving them some help and some real love, we're sitting there arguing with each other about some stupid book and what somebody else said about it. Who gives a fuck? You know, that's the thing with me right now. 
is there are important things, to, more important things to do than argue about somebody else's belief system. If you don't agree with it, then let them go. Find somebody who is online with you. And, and the thing is, on your site, on your Facebook page, most people are not fundamentalists. There's no reason to argue about religion. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. The ambassador pointed out, he said, look at the difference in the comments between your Facebook page and your YouTube channel. People on the YouTube channel are, are being much more argumentative than those on the Facebook page. You know, he, he made that observation to me in the last, uh, each of the last two days, he brought up the same subject with me. Well, that's why I'm being rageful, if you can call it that. I call it passion. I'm being passionate respectfully. There is such a thing as respectful passion. When you're in an argument with your lover, you know, do you go and, and, and leave because you're in an argument? You have an argument? No, you make up. And the smartest way to be in an argument with your lover is to stop in the middle of when you're completely and say, I love you. Okay? Stop in the middle, make a pause, pretend, you know, pretend something is drawing your attention, and it is, it's your heart. And, and say, I love you. In any intimate relationship, that is going to make a big ass difference because when the argument fires up again, it's built on a much different premise than when it started. Okay? You don't have to justify, I love you. And you don't say, I'm sorry. Do not be sorry for being angry. Everybody, even if we disagree, I have a reason for being angry. You have a reason for being angry. That is not the point. That's why we freak out about right and wrong, because we feel violated, so we have to be right. If we don't feel violated when we disagree, then we don't care about being right. We just care about not being violated. We want our boundaries respected. Boundaries are a good thing. You say property is a good thing. You know, well, property is all about boundaries. And freedom is all about boundaries as well. You say that as well. So when we argue, our boundaries are being violated. This includes religious argument. Our sense of spiritual integrity is being violated by somebody else's aggressive viewpoints. That's how we take it. Because they're telling us to do something we don't want to do, to be something we don't want to be, else, or else we're going to be punished. They're imposing on our own ability to manifest our reality. They're trying to throw a probability at us. And we don't just go stomp on them when they do that. We handle this in a way that's constructive. We say, go your own way, dude. You know, do that, whatever. Believe what you want to believe. I have my reasons for not believing in this thing. And these are very valid because my boundaries are respected. If I'm on the wrong path, it's my job to figure it out. There's, there's enough input and enough variety out there for, for a human being with two brain cells to slap together to make their decisions. And if we don't relate to each other as human beings that have brain cells that can slap together and do something, then who are we talking to? Who are we with? Who are our comrades? Who are our others? Who, are, who is our network? Of course people then go as hopeless because they see everybody else as stupid. When we argue with each other about, about you know dogmas as if the other person's opinion is threatening, an opinion is threatening, a fist is threatening. A gun is threatening. An opinion is simply a matter of choice. And, and thus, the problem is on the inside. The problem is someone is not dealing with their sense of violation. And they'll do anything to avoid it. They'll, they'll stomp, they'll throw a tantrum, they'll cry like a child. That rage is not constructive because it doesn't release blocks. It wiggles around them. You know, you can see the difference of when you constantly notice if you're getting angry, Notice that if your rage is constantly coming back, if you're getting angry for the same reasons over and over again, it's like a, a, a jilted lover crying and crying and crying and it never stopping. And then they choose another dickhead and get jilted again and crying and crying and crying. Something is not being resolved there. There's a deep pain that's still held in and we just move enough emotion to go around it, but the core issue isn't being resolved. And the core issue is we have been violated. When lovers jilt you, they violate you. That's how you experience it. It's a violation. Your boundaries are shattered because you've opened up your heart and, and everything's been torn apart. When somebody imposes a dogma on you, you feel violated. We are rape victims. We have not understood that. Until we understand what it means to be a rape victim, we cannot do crap. We cannot resist psychopaths. We cannot... Stand up, we cannot come up to, with solutions because we're constantly stuck 
on our hurt private parts, the parts that have been violated mind, the body, the soul, whatever. So we're constantly being violated again and again and again. Just like a victimized spouse goes for the, the, the victimizer constantly because that's all they know. Because they've made a choice not to move that poor thing. A woman who gets beaten by her husband, finally the cops come. Oh, don't hurt him because what am I going to do if he leaves? Because the part of me that is independent and free is now stuck and I refuse to move it because I'm scared. So there's a shitload of fear to face people. And the fear is not about what they're going to do to us. It's about us refusing to move. Um, so I was looking at all of these discussions and religion and everything else. And, and that's when I see the glitch in all of our, uh, you know, Facebook discussions. We see the same thing coming back. Some people saying, I'm fed up. I just want to die. Tell me, do something. What? Oral sex, what do you want me to do, you know, to make you not fed up? The only way you're going to be not fed up is to either be driven to the wall and do something desperate or else start looking inside and finding your strength. And the only way to do that is to be alone because a person, unless they're completely rock bottom, they're not going to look for the one resource left to them, and that resource is within. They're going to find excuses to look for other resources. That's why our world is going down a sliding hill, because it's not about the number of people so much as it is about the quality of the vibration that those who are awake are exhibiting, and that quality is not up to snuff. You don't need that many people to get the ball rolling. That's what we want to do. We don't want to... Press a button and have paradise pop up all of a sudden. We want to get balls rolling. We want to tip snowballs over the top of mountains. Inspirational solutions and let the snowballs go down and collect momentum. And they will because the more people feel inspiration, the more they will have the courage to act in little things and little things become bigger things. And then we can start networking like adults Instead of like children, running in circles, arguing the same old things, and then the psychopaths pay people, they pay people to get over and say, here's another piece of news, and here's another piece of news, and here's another thing. And oh, the so-and-so -and -so said this and that. And so don't worry, oh spectator populace. Sit back, eat your popcorn, watch the show, enjoy it. Yeah, the dramatic conclusion is coming. And then they're all going to say, ha-ha, you know, the theater's on fire. And all the doors are locked and you didn't give a shit because you were too busy watching the show instead of making your own. This is an unscripted time. You do not hand over your power of scripting reality to another person who you know has ulterior motives, even if you suspect they have ulterior motives. You start relating to people next to you who you are fairly certain through your heart, through your in intuition and your reasoning people on the Facebook page, for example. Most of them are sincere alternative spiritualists, if you want to call it that. People in your neighborhood, they live in the same thing, in the same conditions, everything. Pray for that. If you want to manifest something, manifest, oh God, give me somebody with whom to connect in order to get the ball rolling. Don't ask for big things. There's so much human sacrifice going on, so much negative energy that, that the big things, going for the gold, Oh, God, give me paradise. Oh, God, give me the love of my life. Well, before you go for the love of your life, why don't you go ask God to give you the directions of self-improvement you need to be worthy of the love of your life? And I don't mean worthy as a soul or on the inside, but worthy as a human mature expression. Because if you're acting like a kid, how is somebody going to approach you? Because you're not resonating the fact that you're going to be a supportive, mature, empowered, sovereign adult. This is true for me. I went through this, you know, and I'm still going through it, facing everything that keeps me from being a, a sovereign, mature adult in order to be with the love of my life. And if I'd ever meet that person, hypothetically speaking, then she would tell me, well, I'm scared. I don't know. Because, you know, the energy you're resonating, even though she might not put it in those terms, is not one of a dependable adult. I don't know if your love is real, if that's the energy you resonate, even if it would be real. So you get a scared person on the other end, regardless if they're resonating the same energy. Somebody's got to make a start, man. That's the thing. We're the initiators here because we know better. 
Everybody in your Facebook page knows better. They claim they're awake. Well, with great, great awakening comes great responsibility, as the, to paraphrase the comic book guy. You can't just go around bragging that you're awake. That's fucking childish. I'm sorry. I'm tired of hearing that, too. We're awake. They're not. So let's waken up more. No. Sit down and realize what the fucking impact of being awake is and what the responsibility of it really is. And it's not going to be easy, but it involves self-improvement. It involves being a spiritually mature adult, not one who, that gets into stupid arguments. You can get into arguments and disagreements, but about fundamental issues, issues that are impacting. For example, if, if we can easily get into a discussion with people about, well, how do you face all this crap? I'm too fucking scared. Yeah, that's an adult. An adult is the one who admits they're scared but doesn't sit around running around in circles until somebody else, the big teacher, comes in and makes everything right. For those of people who do believe in the personal God, and I'm, you know, yes and no about it, and, and both and, and all of that, but the thing is, for those who do believe in it, how would a personal parent actually treat a child who refuses to grow up? How would they do it in the most loving fashion? Would they keep feeding them candy? Would they put them in the daycare paradise center and just keep them there? They would, you know, they wouldn't hurt them, but if the child hurt themselves, what would they do? Constantly bandage their knee? And then the child would go, oh, I hurt myself again. Keep bandaging, keep hugging. I had a relative, when he was a baby, he would always burden the mother with crying and crying, and, and the kid had to just be carried. So the kid was one year old, two years old, three years old, four years old. The mother would constantly, and the mother was getting back problems doing this, carrying the kid around. Put the fucking kid down. Oh, no, he's going to have psychological problems if I do that. He's going to have loneliness and he'll turn crazy and he'll, you know, it's like, come on, man. He'll have erectile dysfunction when he grows up if I put him down. No, he's going to have erectile dysfunction if you keep carrying him. You don't get that kid. You have to let the kid use his legs, you know. You have to get him and you have to tell him, look, I'm not going to carry you. I'll hold your hand. Maybe God is holding our hands and we're not even recognizing because so we're, we're so hung up on being carried. Do we know what it even means for God to hold our hands? You had an experience once. You said love, light, and laughter. I had the same experience in a slightly different form. Mine was laughter. Nobody's evil. Everybody's just seriously ill. And there's always two sides to the issue, so don't rush to evaluate. And don't forget to laugh. It's not that serious, no matter what you think. But that was God holding my hand. That was God holding your hand. And then when God let go and it was all gone, you had to walk on yourself, you were wondering, why can't I just be carried all the time? Then you'd be a cripple, you know. And then you'd blame God for making you a cripple. That's what happened with Adam and Eve in paradise or whatever. Their alter ego, the serpent, came up and said, hey, you're all having a good time, but you can't be free. You can't be like God. God is free. You know, you can't be all-knowing because you can't be free if you don't know. So what are you going to do? And, oh, original sin. All of those who imposed the religions on us said that was a bad thing. No, that was God holding the hand of Adam and Eve. He, he held their hand and took them out of paradise, and some asshole down the line turned into a horror story. The fact is... We are challenged to get up on our own two feet. And God will hold our hands, but we have to reach out like that, not with some, oh, you know. It's very simple. It comes from the heart. That's all we need, and most people know that. However, the act of standing up is our own. We are not seeking crutches here. We are not seeking uh, to be given a solution. We're seeking to be given opportunities to create a solution. Otherwise, we won't be satisfied. We will once again project the shadow that's going to oppress us. That's the way things work, because we won't be satisfied. The problem is we don't know we won't be satisfied So we're, because we're too busy bitching about the current situation in the way we do, many of us. And that's natural, and it's understood. But there needs to be a part of us that can actually look at the bitching and say, OK, I accept this, but where, what do we do? Where do we go from here? We need to, you know, we need to awaken the adult mature part of us. All of us have it. I wouldn't be able to talk like this if I didn't believe the listeners were mature adults who understand things on some level. 
But let me tell you this, you got to honor that part that's pissed off or afraid or anything. And you got to honor it because it needs to trust you. You can't go vent it all the time because it won't trust you because it thinks that its well-being depends on everybody else's opinion or, or unopinion. It keeps thinking that it's between you and other people instead of between you and yourself. So don't be afraid to express completely and express alone. And it takes time for these things to move. And then you can find the love of your life that will completely understand you because you understand yourself. Then you will find God because you've actually lifted your hands up spontaneously and something will touch them. A light touch, maybe a subtle touch. Because unless you cultivate self-honoring and forget about everybody else and the right and wrong thing or whatever, yeah, you're right. You have, you're right all the time because you're you. But it's nobody else's business. The right and wrong thing is going to not be a problem when the violation thing, and I'm talking about sensitivity to violation. Oh, you, you smiled at me the wrong way. You looked at me the wrong way. You said the wrong thing. That kind of violation, not the psychopath kind. We need to deal with that kind of violation first in order to be resilient to deal with the real violation. And we need to be able to honor ourselves because another person will see that, be inspired. And if they start trying to use us, then they will. There are many people who say, oh, you've got it all together. You carry me. You do it. You give us the thing. You, you, you give us this. You be the leader. And we'll sit back and watch the show. It's like, no, you're not going to sit back and watch the show. Whoever sits back and watch the show these days is going to die. Whether they're, you know, it's different about ignorant people. They're ignorant. They don't even know there is a fence that they're sitting on. But if you're awake, it's over. You're responsible. There's no turning back. you got to move forward. That's what I'm saying. I'm speaking to those people who are awake, and especially those people who are awake and like to gloat and feel good about it. Instead of being scared like they should be because wakefulness carries a tremendous responsibility. It doesn't have to be a burden. It's an opportunity for real. But please, people, whenever you start going into these patterns again, sit back, take stock, and don't be religious in the moral. Don't be moral. Just be honest with yourself in the way you instinctively can be. It's nobody else's business because when you make it other people's business, you are calling to be violated on a psychological level, whether other people intend it or not. Be sovereign. Set your boundaries. You don't have to isolate yourself when you set your boundaries. And then as you do that, you'll find resilience and strength. And you can love other people because you're not afraid anymore. And you'll find that the world is a very beautiful place, a worthwhile place. It's worth fighting for. Love is worth fighting for. And fighting is defined by love, not by the psychopath. Okay, we don't have to throw the word out. Fighting means conviction, commitment, resilience, and, and belief, all of these things. Faith, hope, love, charity, all of these things, they come together in love. Love is the greatest of them because it contains them all. That's what fighting, true fighting really means. You don't have to say spiritual warrior or this or that, this violence freak out. It's all about violation. We're only going to freak out about violation when we feel violated somewhere, not by the psychopaths. That's a different kind of violation. But we need to deal with a violation that's within our reach. That's why we constantly freak out with each other. I'm going to stop the talk here at 6.33 where you are. So uh, I began at 101 on my end, and at 6.33, I will end it because this is a 6.66 topic, not a 5.55 topic. This is we're moving into 666, so things are going to get chaotic. The conversation may get chaotic. My voice may become a little more impassioned, but, you know, I'm going to start coughing and choking soon because I've been screaming raw yesterday in order to get into this. So I'm speaking from personal experience. And it's not the voice of anger anymore. It's the voice of passion. Passion is what makes the world go right. Let's cultivate it and not be afraid. Thank you again for Thank you, Aristo. Namaste. <laughs>